Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Narrative 4's official launch of our Summer of Impact. And to kick us off on this auspicious day, um, we have one of the finest people in the world and one of the greatest musicians in the world coming in from Ireland right now broadcasting Mr. Colm Makanumra.
Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, Malak and Sinead. Yes, yes. thank you. Thank you so much, first of all, Colin McNamara, for this wonderful, absolutely heart-touching musical performance. Uh, you are indeed one of the greatest artists, violinists, and storytellers of our time. And I remember the first time I heard you perform was back in 2017. It was at the Nearly Four Global Summit in Ireland. And, and you were playing while Colin McCann was, was reading from his work, Fishing the Slow Black River. And at the time, there wasn't just one storyteller. There, was, there were two. There was Colin McCannambra telling the story through the notes and Colin McCann telling the story through words. And to this day, every time I hear you perform and play, I'm just delighted and I feel like it's, it's when the music touches the soul, whether it was when I heard you in Ireland, in the US, or here in Israel and Palestine. And then it was also the year I met Colin McCann, the great Colin McCann. Um, Colin, you were reading from your works and it was words of truth and, and words that were striving towards creating social change. And one of our first conversations, dear Colin McCann, was uh, when, you, when, when I had told the story of a racism situation that I was faced with here in Israel and, and how I reacted to it. And you asked me, Malik, how do you do this? And, and, and like, how do you act in, in calmness? How do you act in that way towards racism? And, and back then I, I, I didn't have an answer for you, Colin, but today I do, I do. Through your works, in your books, through your conversations with me, that every time we spoke, you would tell me, the words would come out with, with truth and words that were really trying to inspire the young, our young generation towards creating a social change. And also through the amazing work of Narrative 4, through storytelling, that you created, I have an answer for you today, that it is people like you who inspire us, the young generation, to do such work. So thank you, Colum. And uh, I would like to introduce myself to everyone. My name is Malika Ham, and I'm logging in from Nazareth in Israel. I'm an Arab Palestinian living in Israel. And I have been with Nerdy 4 for about three years now. And it has been a continuous uh, process of growth and understanding and building empathy. And um, starting as a participant, now to becoming a student ambassador and part of the student council and a facilitator for story exchanges in, 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 the, in the land here and virtually, I'm delighted to say and honored to be here in this wonderful event. And um, I would pass it on from here to the wonderful young poet, Sinead O'Reilly. Thank you, Malak. I, I love hearing you speak every time. It's just so from the heart, I love it. Um, so my name is Sinead O'Reilly and I'm a 15 year old student from Wexford, Ireland. Um, I'd also like to just remind all attendees that there's gonna be a and A later so you can be collecting your questions and you can pop them into the chat if you like and we'll try and get to them later. Um, so I read a Paragon earlier this year and it blew me away. Like I don't know how to express my reaction in words. It wasn't as simple as liking the book or finding it interesting. It was one of those really, really rare times when a book hits you so hard, you feel like you have to do something about it. So I emailed Colin McCann, not expecting to hear anything back. So I was amazed to find a beautiful response, which let me know about Narrative 4 and the work they do in unleashing stories around the world. A Paragon and Narrative 4 have both opened up a whole new world for me. Um, 
as a teenager exposed to count horrific events and conflicts around the world, I find books like A Paragon to be absolutely vital in showing us the humanity behind these situations. And it really, like, it turns it into more than a distant story. Um, and yeah, A Paragon is not a novel in the sense that we may be used to. It weaves countless threads together, connecting from all different angles to form a beautiful yet heartbreaking tapestry. And even blank spaces hold their place in this amazing creation. What I learned most of all from reading The Paragon is the infinite power of a story. Each story starts years before the first page, continues long after the last page, and cuts deeper than any physical depth. I heard Malak say that the story is like a beating heart. Um, as it's described in the book, this heart carries a strength of nothing short of nuclear. A paragon enables us to hold this heart and witness its power simply by existing and being told. And that's why I love a paragon. So I'm going to pass it on to Colin McCann now to tell us more about this wonderful novel. Thank you. Well, I, I, I gotta say, I'm so deeply touched by, 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 all, of, by all of that. Firstly, um, Colm uh, Makanumra, um, coming from Wexford and, and, and playing that music, which is the music um, which I used to, um, and, and listened to um, the whole time uh, while I was writing this novel, which was over the course of about five years, virtually every day for about five years, I would listen to um, to Colm's music. It became the soundtrack of my soul in many ways. Also it became the soundtrack um, of so uh, much that, that, that involves Rami and Vassam, who I'm going to introduce here um, in a minute. Um, and can I say, um, that I'm so inspired by Malak and Sinead um, and deeply, deeply, deeply touched because I think in certain ways you are reaching out to the spirits of Abir and Smadar, who are the daughters of Rami and Bassam um, in my novel, A Paragon. Um, and in a certain way, you're reaching across the, the, the divide, you're reaching across barriers and boundaries uh, to, to, to fetch the spirit of these, um, these young women um, back into the world, which is also what Rami and Bassam do so profoundly uh, all the time when they tell the stories of how they lost their daughters. And in a certain way, it feels to me today that we, have, we are recapturing uh, the spirit of their daughters. And when I look at, uh, uh, at young people like you guys and all the young people who are on here from Narrative 4 today, um, I am so genuinely, genuinely touched um, and inspired by, um, by, what you, uh, by what you do. So um, I, am, I am extraordinarily uh, grateful for both of those introductions. And Malak, I will never forget your story, the first story I heard you tell. Um, and uh, Sinead, I will never forget getting that, uh, that beautiful email from you. And then checking out your poetry too. You're a, you're a poet for the future. So I'm really um, inspired by that. Um, this is the launch of the Summer of Impact. Today is the event where Narrative 4 um, has uh, come to the, to, 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 to the front of uh, uh, lots of crises that, 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 that we are having in, in the world and has decided uh, through, the, through the great leadership of Lisa Consiglio and many others who are uh, part of our, our, of our staff to have a summer of impact, almost 100, maybe even over 100 events over the next um, couple of months. There will be facilitator training, there will be online exchanges, there will be information about Narrative 4, there will be a brand new website, maybe even as soon as uh, when we get off this um, phone call, um, a brand new website popping up that people have worked on for a long, long time. Narrative 4 is coming to the very forefront uh, of uh, what's going on right now. And um, it is an extraordinary honor uh, to be able to talk to um, two men um, who have 
change the world through their um, storytelling and their bravery and their courage. Um, and I am so uh, also astounded by looking at the, the, at the, the chat on the, on, on the side here to see where people are coming in from all over uh, the world to come join us on this, um, on this incredible journey. Um, and so um, thank you for doing so. Uh, please put uh, your questions in the, in, in the online chat and we'll try to answer the questions later on. Um, one person with whom, or there's so many, there, there are donors on there, there, there are writers on there, there are uh, students, there are so many people. I want to give a special uh, shout out to all our supporters, but most of all uh, to Karen Hollands, uh, who has underwritten this um, this incredible uh, summer of impact and, and has underwritten all of Narrative Four summits for the past number of years and has pledged to do so for the, for the foreseeable future. Um, we, we learned from our students in South Africa to click our fingers like this. I, 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 if we can all click our fingers together for the wonderful, amazing uh, Karen Hollands. So thank you so much uh, for coming on. Um, so, once again, uh, if you're new to what's going on here, um, uh, Colin Makanumra is going to play for us again later on. I am going to talk uh, with uh, my heroes, Rami and uh, Bassam. So, um, uh, Rami, uh, I know you have a really wonderful, secure uh, internet connection there. Can you, um, can, 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 can you, can you say hello? And, and, and maybe can you just, um, you know, uh, talk about what you see in these young people. And, you know, I felt inspired. I felt that the spirit of, of, of Abir and Smadar, who have sat on my shoulders for, for, for a long time now, was sort of available in the passion that we see in not just in these young people, but in, in, in young people sort of all over the world. Well, uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for having us here. I'm amazed by these young uh, people. Sinead and Malek, you are absolutely wonderful. We meet uh, hundreds and thousands of young uh, people uh, when we do these uh, lectures in Israeli and Palestinian high schools every, every day, every week, every month. Uh, and uh, this is our future. This is the continuation of uh, our daughters and the ability of these young people not to stand aside the ability of these young people to get involved and do something about their own future is, uh, is a heartwarming thing. Thank you for doing so. And Bassam, I know you're there and I think you're there in Jericho today um, and you're, 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 you're sitting uh, in, 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 in the car now at this stage. The last time I saw you, you were under the Jericho moon, which was an extraordinary thing in, in the back garden of, of your house. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to, 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 to uh, it's so good to see you. Thank you, my brother. In fact, I'm in my office right now. It looks like a car. But because I have a lot of noise around the world, uh, the house, uh, all of you inspired me. Always, every time we meet, and for Khalum, it's amazing. Maybe for the first time, he will hear that he is amazing. I don't think so, but he's different, he's very different, he's a great. Uh, for the new generations, this is the continuous of the, the history of the future. For that, I'm very proud of Malak and the other new generations who will hold this message uh, to build a new culture, new civilization. Uh, new values uh, around the world through the education. This is up to us to education given 
and I think the best educator is Kalu Makan, the genius, through your way, uh, through a paragon and other uh, activities, through peace, those organizations and people right around the world, it should be carried back. Thank you. My, thank, thank you so much, Bassam. Um, we, we're having a, f a few little technical issues there, um, but I can hear your heart and your spirit um, in, 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 in all of those words. Um, I have to say, that um you know for those of you who are new to this i want to say the, the 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 first day i met these two men i met them in a town called Beit jala which is um you know near near bethlehem just outside um jerusalem and i walked up a staircase into a room uh, and they were sitting there and they told me their stories um and um i was with a group from narrative four and um we i we all uh, had our hearts blown completely wide open. Um, and I came away from there thinking that, um, the, you know, you had told me the story for the very first time. But of course, you don't tell the story for the very first time. Um, that day alone, uh, Rami and Bassam, you probably had told the story three or four times to other groups. But to me, because it was so special, it felt like you were whispering um, in my ear. And it's something that you do uh, over and over and over again. And, and it speaks to the power of storytelling, which is what uh, Narrative 4 um, is very much about. Um, and sometimes, um, you know, we have to remember that we have to tell the story over and over again, um, in the hope that, um, that 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 things will change. Now, Rami, I would like to ask you. Um, you know, you seem like a a, a a man who who refuses cynicism. You understand what cynicism is, and you understand the darkness, and you've seen the darkest things uh, in your own life. But somehow, you and your brother Bassam have uh, made it a pledge to change the world through the act and the art of stories and, 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 and storytelling. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship to stories and, 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 and how, how that feels for you? Uh, well, uh, I was not always what I am uh, today. I was one of the greatest cynicist people around the globe. Uh, as uh, an outcome of what happened to me in the 73 war, I came out of it a very devastated person and um, traumatized. And I became the, uh, the, uh, the utmost cynical people, person on earth. I was a, a graphic designer. I was doing graphic design for the right wing, for the... Where, uh, for the left wing, whoever paid me, I was uh, completely uh, out of my own picture uh, for so many years. Uh, and uh, the cynicism changed once I uh, was invited by uh, Mr. Yitzhak Frankenthal in 1998, one year, year after I lost my daughter to um, the first meeting that I attended of the Parent Circle, which was a life changer because this uh, meeting, the ability to see, I was a, a victim of the Israeli brainwashing system. I was uh, a victim of the, of the fact that the other side was hidden from me, uh, the language, the culture, the music, everything. And the first meeting with Palestinian bereaved families changed my life because for the first time in my life, and I was 47 years old at the time, uh, I saw Palestinians as human beings. Um, uh, the complete of this change was uh, meeting Bassam Aramin in 2005. Uh, my son uh, Elik was one of the founders of Combatants for Peace alongside with Bassam and me and my wife knew it was standing at the cradle of this uh, of this amazing movement and I uh, met someone that did not allow me to go on being a cynical person because he's full of art. That's that, that's beautiful and can I ask you um, Bassam I hope that we can get your, your connection and um, you know 
your own story to get to that meeting for Combatants for Peace is extraordinary. You were 17 years old. You were sent to prison for seven years. You were the uh, commander, the Fatah commander in, while in prison. You saw a documentary on the Holocaust and you came out of prison and you decided that um, you had to uh, sort of engage uh, with n knowing uh, who other people happen to be. Can you just talk a little bit uh, ab about that, that, that? I don't know even know if, it, if it's fair to say transformation in your life. And um, maybe, Bassam, if you could turn off your, 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 your video, then we could uh, get a better uh, audio connection because uh, we want to hear your voice most of all. Thank you, Calum. I, do, I know that you don't want to see me all the time, which is okay. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, I, I don't call it transformation because I think I start to be a peace activist when I start to struggle against the occupation. It's totally different. It's, it's not easy to understand that. Uh, in spite, I consider to be a fighter, but I never harm anyone on earth. Uh, it was a very difficult experience at the same time. Uh, it starts and ends, in fact, with education. Because I believe uh, uh, how we educate ourselves. If you know more, you act better. If you don't know, so you are a victim. And I want to understand myself, who's the Palestinians from where we came? Who is those people who come to control our land or to occupy our land? Why? Uh, then you find yourself in a different, different place, uh, which is the philosophy of life. We need to survive, to continue, to develop. And uh, I believe that uh, personal, uh, I cannot imagine my uncle, uh, not because of me, because of him. He loves me very much. Because we are partners. We want to spread the same message around the world. Uh, and I believe that this message is very strong when we touch other people, other Palestinians and Israelis and humans around the world because our message is universal. And I believe that when you allow yourself to know the other, the enemy, whatever, in the first place you pay respect to yourself, to your narrative, to your story, to your story. Uh, we are not going to change our uh, history, we're not going to change the truth. No, how those people receive themselves. Uh, so uh, and to try to understand, maybe we can find another way. I hope you hear me. I, I hear you. That's so, that, Do that, you that's hear me? That's so powerful. I, 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 I heard you la loud and clear in the sense that, that, that um, we have a few audio issues, but I mean, um, as I said earlier, we can hear your heart thumping um, across the world. I mean, this is one, one of the things that I think is so incredibly important. The message that you two bring um, and everybody in Parents Circle and indeed in your new um, Abir Smadar Foundation is that we need to know one another. And um, this is also the message um, that, 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 that's inherent in everything we do at, at, at Narrative 4. Um, we get people to step into one another's shoes uh, to, learn, uh, to learn what it means to be somewhere else, someone else beyond, and then to turn that empathy into action on the ground. Now, Malak, you've been involved with Narrative 4 for, 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 for a couple of years. Will you just tell us a little bit about your own experience of stories and storytelling? And then what does it feel like to know that Bassam and Rami are right there beside you and that you actually are part now of, of their particular story? You're in Nazareth, uh, Rami is in Jerusalem, 
and uh, Bassam is in, is in Jericho. They're all within a couple of hours of each other. And, uh, and, and, and somehow, can we make these stories um, you know, available to the whole world? Uh, and, and, and will it be young people like yourselves who can, who can shepherd that energy, bring it from underneath? Because for years, it's been pushed down upon us, these, the, the, these narratives you know, by politicians, by corporations, even by artists. But there is a sense, I get the sense, that there's a swelling coming from underneath. Um, do you have the same sort of hope that, 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 that Rami has and, and, and can you speak to those sort of notions? Absolutely. Um, I very much believe in, in the power of the youth because I myself, I'm still 18 years old, but because I, I decided to become involved in, I, in, in leaders like you, um, um, who, who, who tell us about, about the, 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 the change that could be, that can come out of, of building empathy and, and being involved in story exchanges. Um, I have myself changed throughout the years of being involved in Narrative 4. I myself have, have started to see how it, it impacted how I see the world. And so um, I think that it's very important to, to teach the youth because the youth are like um, lean clay. If, if, you, if you teach them the right values at a young age and you implement those values, then they can grow in those values. And whatever, if, if, you, if, you, if you do the structure right and you teach them what, the, the, the truth of, of empathy and humanity, then whatever... Um, effects and whatever um, powers from outside that could come onto them in the future, they will know that they have a strong basis. They have a strong foundation of, of what is right and wrong, what is humane and what is not. Because if, if, when people get old and like, not old, but you know, when they grow up and they become so involved in life, it is, it is, it, it turns into this, um, survival of uh, they just focus on, on making it by the day but but and, and sometimes it's so sad but they don't have time to understand the truth behind what is happening around them but when they're still young when there's when their mind is still uh, open you have to you have to expose them and so when you do those youth will, will rise up to become the next generation that will actually lead with empathy uh, so beautifully said, and, and you as a young Palestinian living in Israel, you, you know, you, you have to deal with all these different um, contradictions and, and we're trying to, you know, it, through Narrative 4, link you with young people like Sinead, and I'm going to bring Sinead on here now uh, uh, in, in a second. Um, you know, what is it, what is it uh, about you, Sinead, that, that when you read A Paragon, when you read Rami and Bassam's story, that you somehow said, oh, I have to, I have to reach out, that the world is bigger than what I see here, uh, you know, in, 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 in Ireland. What was it, is it about maybe your generation that can somehow harness the energy of, 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 of what's going on? Or is that sentimental? I mean, some people might say, oh, gen young, everyone says the young generation. What, is there a difference this time around? I think um, what just came to my mind when you were saying that is the fact that it's it's not just the young generation, it's everyone as human beings. Um, like when I read A Paragon, what struck me was that, okay, this is a story that's happening in a country I've never been in where I don't really understand a lot of things. But that aside, everyone is a human. I can now every character as a human um, and that kind of just opened my eyes to that in a general sense in the whole world and I think um, yeah the power of the story exchange with young people I think I completely agree with Malak that um, like young people's mind be moulded really easily um, so if we can instill this sense of just everyone human and there are learned differences but those aside we're made of the same stuff and 
really, I don't think there has to be a complicated solution to all these problems in the world. Um, it can simply be as simple as we're humans. It's natural for us for like, um, so yeah, powerful. I'm not sure. How yeah, no, so, so, this, powerfully, so powerfully said. And, and I mean, that, that, that's something that, 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 that Rami talks a lot about, recognizing the humanity in somebody whom maybe you shouldn't recognize uh, the, or, 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 or your culture has taught you or history has taught you that you shouldn't see them in a certain way, but, but, but you have to have a bravery to see them in a certain way. I'm going to tell everyone that we're going to have Colin McAnumra coming up in, 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 in just a second, and I want to introduce him. But Rami, can you speak to what Sinead is, 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 is talking about there? <laughs> I'm honored to listen to a young person like Sinead. She's so full of uh, wisdom and uh, energy and insight. And I, I cannot add uh, one single word to the uh, wonder of your words because uh, you speak so beautifully. Thank you for that. Um, so I, I'm going to tell you a, a, a quick story, and 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 Colm's going to going to going to put the the, the the rosin on 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 the fiddle. We went uh, with a group from Narrative Four uh, to Israel and Palestine last year to meet Rami and Bassam. That was the highlight uh, of it. Another one of the highlights was when we went to Ida refugee camp, which is just beyond checkpoint 300 uh, in Bethlehem. And there we met um, Abdel Fattah, um, who is the director of a program there. Um, uh, and his concept uh, of uh, working with young people was uh, the concept of beautiful resistance. Through music, through stories, through art and storytelling, uh, he gets these young people to resist, but to resist non-violently, uh, to, to resist in the most creative way. Abdul Fattah is now, uh, uh, you know, along with these men, he's another one of, of, of my heroes because he embraces the world, knows that he can change the world somehow if he tries hard enough, but does it uh, in new, creative, non-violent ways. So um, Al Rawad is the, is, is the program. Myself and Colm uh, got a chance to go in, with a couple of others to go into the refugee camp and column. Um, there was we went to Abdul Fattah's office and can you take it from there because um, you found um, a broken violin and this is a story about human repair and violin repair uh, and uh, anybody who wants to check it out I have an article in the Guardian newspaper check out the Guardian and Colm McAnumra, Colm McCann and you'll see the full story about uh, what Colm is about to uh, to talk to talk us through the rest of it right now. Yeah so we were in um, Abdel Fattah's office a uh, tiny office in, um, in in the refugee camp. And Can you speak just, a little closer to the microphone there Colm by any chance? To, to, to orient uh, the 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 office in, in question is um, just next to the the wall the the separation wall um, and um, so uh, I, I I couldn't but notice no more than kind of you know every person's uh, antennae are attuned to different things and you know I, I kind of would spot a, a fiddle case from a uh, hundred paces and uh, I spotted one in the corner of the office as we were sitting down. So um, as Abdel Fattah was beginning to tell us about the, the program, that the programs that they run there, um, I just kind of, you know, being nosy, uh, went over and kind of uh, un 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 unlocked the case and looked inside and the, the violin inside was kind of, um, the strings were all off Kind of, uh, and it was in disarray, disarray. The bridge was off. The the tailpiece was off. So this is the bridge and the tailpiece. Um, so I kind of took it out and then started kind of, you know, I I could see. Um, I could understand. Yeah. So, sorry, oh, but sorry. could you please, could you please open your camera? People would love to see you while you speak. Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I'm not sure how my video went. There we are. Am I there again? Oh, my video. Okay. Are we there? Okay. Great. Hello, everybody. Once again. So there I was, putting this violin back together again. So the, the pegs were off, the, the tailpiece, this part was off, the bridge was off. And Abdel Fattah started to talk and 
I basically started to reassemble the, the violin. And I could tell it was a nice, you know, it was a very nice instrument. Um, I would say it's probably a, like a 19th century instrument and it had been sent over by uh, some, some nice lady in, in England. Um, and it had a letter inside um, mm -hmm. and she donated it. And it, was one of, it belonged to a child of hers who didn't play it anymore. And uh, so just, I kind of gently started to kind of coax it back to life because it's a tricky thing if something hasn't been played in a long time and it's made out of wood and wood moves and it's prone to temperature and shrinkage. And so you kind of, I had to kind of cajole it back together again between the pegs and the string tension. And anyway, it got to a point where it was working and that coincided with the point uh, of Abdel uh, finishing his story and I, you know, I decided, I, well, I should play something on this instrument and see what, see what it sounds like. So I, I um, the tune that came to mind was, um, uh, that sprang to mind from uh, every, all that Abdel was talking about was uh, Roisin Dove, which is a, an Irish, uh, probably one of our famous, it, 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 <laughs> it's our kind of unofficial national anthem, you could say. Uh, it's centuries old and it was um, a love song dating back uh, in the days where it was kind of forbidden to, to sing uh, patriotic songs, um, you know, for, for a, a pain of death. So uh, that they, a lot of these songs sprang up um, where Roisin Love, My Dark Black Rose, became the embodiment of Ireland and it was a way of singing about stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I will, as there's a, there's a famous um, a Zen statement, which is uh, to name the bird is to stop hearing it sing. So I'll stop right there and play you the piece. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
On behalf of the Palestinian people, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, music is such an Colin, you're muted. Now you're good. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I didn't. Bassam, um, that's a, such an, a, an extraordinary thing. I mean, uh, music was so important to you and, and still is important uh, to you as you go along. I have to tell you, Rami and Bassam, we're starting and launching a, um, a, an artist's network uh, at Narrative 4 um, right now. And many of the artists are actually uh, on this call. There's people like Rob Spillman and Leela and Ruth and, 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 and others. Um, and we're going to be getting artists engaging with the students, engaging with the teachers. It's a whole new way of, of, of talking about stories and storytelling. Um, uh, maybe Rami first, could you talk about what you think art can do uh, maybe in, 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 in uh, softening people's hearts or hardening people, if you will? Or what, what is the function of the art of the artist at this particular time? Should he or she be political? Uh, and 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 uh, what can we do uh, through art and artists, um, especially in relation to Israel and Palestine? We need you to uh, unmute there, uh, Rami. Sorry. I said this is a heavy question. Uh, I can uh, react to it as a. As a former artist, I, I was a graphic designer in my time. Uh, art should uh, play the hearts of people. Art should uh, touch the hearts of people. Uh, it's a very special place and role of uh, society and art should be done without cynicism. Art should be uh, touch uh, people's minds, people's hearts and carry a message. And the message should be just, and the message should be uh, aware of uh, the pain of people, should be sensitive. And the power of art is tremendous. Look at you and your book and the, the hearts of people that you have touched, uh, thousands and thousands of them, which uh, it's, it's a little message that opens a little crack in their walls of uh, inability to see the other side. And as I always say, through these little cracks, a little light comes in and uh, it can drive away a lot of darkness. So the place of art is extremely important. Uh, and we should uh, uh, turn the voice of art much louder than it is today, because today art is quite silent. And uh, the situation on the ground in our country, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, yesterday there was a, a, a demonstration in front of the Prime Minister's house, tens of thousands of people, which was brutally uh, engaged by the uh, Jerusalem uh, police. Uh, 50 people were arrested. Uh, we are at the darkest age of our democracy. And artists have nothing to eat because of the Corona uh, crisis. So, uh, so uh, the whole situation is touchy, is, uh, is sensitive. It's uh, on the verge of blowing up. And this is the place where art comes in because art should mag magnify and amplify these uh, voices that wants justice and freedom. Colm, you're muted there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Um, but Sam, I'm, I'm wondering how you feel about that. And, 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 and if, um, you know, um, you know how, how is it that, 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 that we can get uh, others to, to, you know, uh, make a, a vault to look at what it means to, 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 to live somewhere else, live somehow else? And, and, and what is the function of the artist um, in, in doing so? I think we believe that, I believe that every artist means in all fields, 
those people, this sector, uh, should change the world. They never accept, they should never accept occupation, racism, discrimination. They need to spread a message of, as Rami said, just justice around the world. And I, I, I believe that every artist should be a revolutionary. Never accept the bad situation, dictatorship. Uh, so it's very important that this voice should be very loud. Absolutely, yes, because they have sense of humanity. Can you, can you, um, uh, off the top of your head, because I, I think um, you, you've done it before, you have that beautiful Darwish poem um, that talks about engagement. Can, 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 can you tell us that, 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 that Darwish poem that talks about this? Well, it's very important. It's very amazing. He says, think of others. And he says, as you prepare your breakfast, think of others. Don't forget to feed the doves. As you conduct your wars, think of others. Don't forget those who seek peace. As you go to pay your water bill, think of others. Don't forget those who only have the clouds to drink from. As you go home, your own home, think of others. Don't forget the people of tents. As you speak freely with metaphors, think of others, of those who lost their right to speak. As you think of others, distant others, think of yourself and wish you are a candle in the darkness. So this is the message. If you hear, if you feel your pain, it's a sign that you are alive. If you feel the pain of others, it's a sign that you are human beings. And this is our goal, to go back to our roots as a human beings. Beautiful. And, and, and that, that candle in the darkness, the candle gives light to uh, other candles. And the light to, to other candles, that, what I'm thinking about is people like Sinead and Malak. And, and they're going to take over some questions here, but I think they might have some questions of their own first uh, that they might want to, um, to, to, to pose to us. And then we'll try to get to some of the amazing questions that are coming through here um, on the side. Um, thank you so much, um, Sinead. Yeah. Um... I have one question for you. Um, I was wondering, how does your work with Narrative 4 influence your writing? Um, for example, does it help regarding the ability to retell someone else's story and retain their truth? That's a great question. Um, and, and, and um, you know, um, Narrative 4 changed my life. Um, this is a Narrative 4 novel. It's the ultimate Narrative 4 novel uh, for me. Um, you know, I originally, uh, you know, went to the United States when I was 21 years old and, and took a bicycle across the United States and learned how to listen to people that way. Um, and I, people would tell me their stories because the world is governed by stories. The, the world is governed by the democracy of storytelling. But never did I find it quite so profound as when I would be uh, stepping into, say, your shoes. My name is Sinead. I am 15 years old. I am a poet, you know, whatever. And then you, you, I tell your story and, 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 and you tell mine. So the, the work of Narrative 4 has been um, incredible. Um, and Malak? And we have to unmute you, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, I have a question for Rami and Bassam. Right, so here's the question. Um, right, this is my turn, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't miss the thing, okay. Bassam Andrami, I had to write this down. I wanted to phrase it right. Bassam Andrami, I've read somewhere that it was hard for the both of you to finish a paragon due to how painful it was. But I've also read that you believe in the power of pain. Could either or the both of you speak more of how you see the pain in the pages of a paragon impacting the readers? I didn't have difficulties to uh, to read the book or to continue reading the book. I didn't read it even uh, because it's really painful. Uh, it's a difference between to believe in the power of pain and to read about your own pain. 
It's my own pain. I feel it 24 hours every day. So no, I know the effect of this pain. But when someone else, very genius, very great, amazing, describe it even better than you think about it, this was very painful. And if we talk about leaders, they are human beings. They are our leaders. We elect them. So sometimes pain can change also their uh, uh, sometimes plans, their thoughts. Uh, this is uh, what happened to Ishaq Rabin himself. For the Palestinians, he was a killer. He was an occupier. He's the only one who gave orders to broke our bones as kids. In spite of that, we consider him as a combatant for peace. When he changed his mind and understand that we cannot continue to occupy another people forever. Here is the change. And we are waiting for another Yitzhak Rabin to come, I don't know, maybe after 100 years in Israel, to recognize that we will never ever accept the occupation. It's a fact, even if we continue forever. So the solution is to end this occupation and someone can, like Ishaq Rabin can save thousands of thousands of lives and years or decades of suffering for both Israelis and Palestinians. So this pain is the motivation to be angry or to take revenge or uh, uh, to be a peacemaker and to understand that this unbearable pain we can use it in a different way, not only for revenge and killing. And this is exactly what we say. Because we love our kids, we don't want to see more blood. We don't want to take revenge because if you think to take revenge, you need to prepare yourself for another bereavement. That's so beautiful, Bassam. I have to say that when I, for the first day I met these two men, afterwards there were these green napkins that were on the table in, in, in the office in Beit Jala, and they um, both wrote me a, a note and they signed their names to it, and the note I still have because I cherish it. And they said to me, harness the power of your grief. Because I was in grief that day when, it, when I met them, and they asked me to go ahead and harness the power uh, of my grief in, 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 a proper, in a proper way. I hope I've done it um, through, through the book. Um, I know that, uh, Rami, you continue to, 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 to harness the uh, power of your grief um, in extraordinary ways. And even though you're retired from the parent circle, the parent circle goes on and on and on. And you have a new foundation uh, that you're just setting up called the Abir Smadar Foundation. Well, uh, the pain is here to stay. It will never go away. It's unbearable. Uh, it's, uh, as Bassam said, 24 hours a day, 59 seconds uh, of every minute. And you need to, uh, to do something with this energy. The energy is uh, very much similar to the nuclear energy. And uh, it's uh, pushing you from inside. In fact, it pushes every uh, bereaved family. People who lost their loved ones are full of this energy and anger and, uh, and they need to find a way to use it. And uh, we at the Parent Circle have chosen to use it in a way that uh, will use this uh, nuclear energy to create uh, warmth and, uh, and hope. And, uh, and uh, this is what gives us a reason to get out of bed in the morning. I'm so glad, um, you, I'm so glad that you get out of bed in, in, in the morning and you inspire us, I mean, all around the world. There's so many questions, uh, Rami and Bassam, that we're going to hand it to Sinead and, 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 and Malak to be the DJs here and to spin a few quick answers out from us before we get the great Colin Makanumra uh, up again to finish us, uh, uh, finish us out. And he's heading off to to see his family in the, in the west of Ireland. We don't, don't want to delay him, but uh, Sinead and Malak, do we have some, some quick questions that we can pose? Um, we absolutely have many questions, um, but let's see which questions we're narrowing down. Okay, I have a question here from Don. This is for Colin. Um, 
This book has tunneled into my mind and heart. I have heard you talk about the birds, the trees. What about the metaphor of the tunnels, which also takes me back to your book, The Other Side of Brightness? Is the character, the character who becomes Mark Kovac invention or based on a person you learned about during research and conversations? Tunnels, not sharpshooters. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I use the metaphor of the tunnels, the tunnels coming together and water coming together, tunnels coming from other sides, which is kind of what um, Rami and Bassam do. They tunnel in to the, the, they tunnel into our hearts and then they, they hit the, they, they hit the, the, the wall together and they, they sound and, and, and then the water comes flowing together. This is kind of what they want to do. Uh, I use the metaphor of sand hogs and, um, and I it actually do invent a character that's part of the fiction, um, you know, who, who is a, a a sand hog um, in Jerusalem, but based loosely on on, on a on a on a true figure. Uh, but I do think that these men are tunnel diggers, um, and what they're what they're doing is profoundly engaging with the earth uh, that 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 is around us. So thank you so much for that question, Malak. You're on mute there. All right, so let's see. This is a question from Christine Chen. Hi, I'm a young writer of mostly creative nonfiction and poetry. I find it difficult to grapple with the ethical dilemma of writing about others in my life, especially when it involves family and close friends. What would you say to writers of nonfiction who are trying to write about their own pain to provide a different perspective of who we are? Well, what a brilliant question. And, 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 you know, like Rami and Bassam kind of have answers to this because, you know, I wrote about them and they are my friends um, and it's difficult, you know, and, 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 and you have to be careful. You have to shepherd the truth. I think I spoke the truth in this book and I think Rami has, uh, has spoken to that. And maybe Rami, you want to, 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 to speak to that. But just before you do to that young writer, um, be careful with people's hearts. Uh, tell the truth. Um, and sometimes you will tell it slant. Um, and uh, realize that words can really hurt people, but they can also build people up in extraordinary ways. So you know deep down in your heart what the truth happens to be. Don't hurt anyone. Uh, try and get out there and 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 and, and uh, you know tell it, tell the truth, uh, but tell it so that it is powerful and positive and 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 has an effect. That doesn't mean shirking away from the violence or the difficulty or anything like that. Don't, don't turn away from it. Like Rami says, the artist has to engage. But, uh, you know, be careful with people's hearts. Rami? Well, uh, you know, I used to uh, do graphic design for uh, the right wing and the, the left wing. And uh, in the 80s, I prepared a poster, which was very, very famous at the time. Of uh, the, the the title was uh, "Raise the Flag," and uh, it was done for a right wing extreme party in the eighties. Uh, and uh, the image in the poster was uh, black and white, highlighted, uh, which we took from a very, very famous. Israeli writer who was a left winger. We didn't know it at the time when we prepared the poster and uh, we were sure that he was just, uh, you know, just another person. And the country was upside down. It was everywhere. It was turning the... Uh, and for me, it was... Uh, I, I, I couldn't understand why they are so angry. It's just a poster. But it was not just a poster. It made me think that... Uh, you have responsibility when you do art, any kind of art. You have responsibility not only to yourself, but to the people around you, to your family, and to the people that you can hurt by doing what you do. And, uh, and what uh, Callum was doing with the book is especially amazing. because He could write anything. He could use uh, the truth. Uh, in a naked way. And the truth is sometimes very hurtful. And uh, my ability to read this book was, uh, was uh, I read it on the plane on the way to the United States, the launching of the book. And I was um, fascinated by Callum's ability to write humanly, 
to write with uh, respect, with dignity, with uh, love, with uh, a way that uh, don't push the finger into your eye in order to get your objective. So uh, I'm, I'm highly respectful for this. Thank you so much. And um, I, I, I mean, my respect for, for, for you guys, as you know, is, is endless. I will tunnel into it uh, forever. Sinead, do we have one more quick question before we get Mr. Mokanomura uh, coming up here? Yeah. Can I say just one word? Yes, please. It's exactly when you see the, the whole world holding the picture of uh, George Floyd and to say, we cannot breathe. This is what connected us. We are the same, the same voice. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Nade? Um, okay, I have one more question here. This question is from Amira and it's for Rami and Bassam. In our work together to change the world through empathy and storytelling, how do you manage to honor the other's truth when or if that truth is conflicting with your own? This challenge can be found in intimate personal relationships as well as communal, tribal, national and international ones. How does this difference in truth coexist with cooperation and the mutual goal of peaceful progress and repair? And I just say that's a, that's an incredible question, and I hate to 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 say to Rami and to Bassam, do you have just like one minute to answer that question? And we could answer it for the rest of our lives because it is an incredibly profound and engaging. I have uh, I have a prepared answer because I was ready for it. <laughs> uh, you should look on the internet for YouTube says uh, Rami and Bassam in uh, uh, in. Uh, High school, for speaking for combatants for peace. Denmark, Denmark high school, yeah. And uh, and the people in this uh, high school were not only extreme right; they were the the the, the utmost racist people, uh, supporters of the most right wing uh, football uh, team possible. And they were shouting at Bassam and the, the headmaster tried to, to calm them down and he, and he started shouting at them. And then Bassam said to them, how can you get respect without giving respect? How can you make people listen without listening yourself? They need to shout and I want to hear what they have to say. And this is a great lesson if you find this uh, movie, this uh, it's, it's an amazing, and in the end of it, in the end of this session, they were standing in line to, to shake Bassam's hand, which is a huge revolutionary. Beautiful. I yeah. just want to say one sentence, what uh, Jalal Eddin Rumi says. Yesterday I, I was clever, so I started to change the world. Today I am wise, so I start to change myself. Change yourself, then you will change the world. This is my answer. Beautiful, and 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 I I, I love uh, the fact that people are on here thanking you for saying George Floyd's name aloud in care and and and, and solidarity. It is a big world out there, and uh, we we learn to embrace it in all sorts of extraordinary ways. You to embrace it in the most profound way that 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 I have seen this summer of impact that we're uh, we're that we're launching today. Um, it will be over a hundred or uh, almost a hundred, maybe over a hundred events going on. Teachers, facilitators, students, there will be online student exchanges. You can exchange from Derby, where I see somebody is, to Belfast, to the Philippines, to Colombia, to South Africa. We have a big writers event coming up with Ishmael Bea's incredible novel, uh, Little Family. We have musicians coming on board. We have a whole worldwide community thousands and thousands of people over the next couple of months coming together talking about all the things talking about issues of racism talking about stories and storytelling please sign on we have a brand new website on its way uh, and we we will uh, bring you into uh, the narrative for family because it is it is very much a family i feel this in the extraordinary way that Sinead and Malak um, introduced us 
uh, today. They, uh, you know, they're your shining examples of of of, of what uh, stories, storytelling, and what young people can do. Um, and uh, I know there are lots of questions online. Maybe uh, somebody will email you a, a link to a little uh, uh, reception that we're going to have um, afterwards uh, if you've asked a question that didn't re necessarily get, get, get answered. But um, I want to say to my friends, my brothers, Rami and Bassam, I love you guys and, and I think you're extraordinary. And this, we will tell the story over and over and over again. And, and, and one day, that chink that you put in the wall, that crack that you put in the wall, uh, will somehow not only let the light in, which is what you do, it'll make that wall fall. Uh, we don't know when it's going to be, but inshallah, it will happen sometime soon. Uh, to Sinead and uh, Malak, amazing, great representatives of Narrative 4. To Karen Hollands for, for underwriting this. To all our donors, all the people there, fantastic. Last thing, Colin Makanamra. I sat in a garden in Dar Jasser, which is right by Checkpoint 302. We picked up tear gas canisters from the back garden of this, uh, this art colony. We rattled them together. Colm had the idea that he was going to make music based on his experience with a paragon and also based on his experience of being in the Holy Land. Um, he is going to... Um, close out this part of the session uh, of our opening of the Summer of Impact for Narrative 4 with um, uh, music that, you know, will be available in, in, in the years to come. He's just making it now. This is brand new. Uh, and uh, he is, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say about you, Colm. Uh, you're part of the artist. Lisa Simmons Mendes. You're a great friend. Take it away, my brother. Okay, this is called the Minbar of Saladin and it's for uh, Rami and Bassam. You guys are amazing. Thank you in advance. <laughs>
Colm, thank you so much. Listen, um, safe, safe travels out to, um, to, to, to Connacht and we'll be seeing you, um, I think, once or twice uh, more during this um, summer of, of impact. Um, Absolutely. Thank Stay you. safe, everybody. Wear a mask. Wear a mask, that's right. Cheers. Thank you. Sinead, Malak. Amazing. Mm. Right. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for attending. Uh, this was, uh, I've seen such amazing uh, comments and questions and it's just, uh, it's just great to see how people can be very much affected by, even in the midst of crisis, uh, all these tools that uh, we, we can use um, to still spread the message that we always believe in um, and, and also uh, great opportunities uh, come up with uh, Zoom, as we can see. So. Uh, we thank you so much for popping in and uh, asking questions. And um, thank you, Colin Rami Bassam and Colin McNamara. Thank you all so yeah. much. Thank you, Sinead. Bye. Bye-bye, folks. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, girls. You are amazing, both of you. Yes, you are both thank amazing. You. Thank you. you so much. Too, for Sorry. You too. Thank you, guys. That was fantastic. That was amazing. Colin McNamara, drive safely and have a wonderful time with your family. Thank you all so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much, Rami and Basam. See you in a bit.